What is going on everyone? Jason here at Waddle and welcome back to another, I can't believe I'm saying it, another UCLA video in like so long actually. It's actually been over four months since I made a video about UCLA or anything like that. But yeah, for this video, we are actually going to be ranking all of my freshman classes that I've taken here at UCLA. So yeah, in order to do so, we will be actually creating a tier list, which includes every single class that I've taken during the first year, as well as the quarter that I took that class, and the professor that I took that class with. Now a couple things that I want you guys to keep in mind throughout this tier list ranking is that one, these rankings and reviews are only my own personal opinion. If you're a UCLA student, I strongly suggest you guys to check out BruinWalk.com. It's basically UCLA's version of Rate My Professors, in which students will write anonymous reviews based on the classes that they took, as well as the professors they had. So ultimately, at the end of the day, you can decide if you want to take a certain class or not. I'm not sponsored by it for this video, but it's just a common thing that a lot a lot of UCLA students like to do and I encourage you guys to check out the other reviews as well. And second condition of this video is that my reviews would not be based upon the grade I got because I'm sure it's very easy to get caught up in this whole GPA thing especially as a pre-med when your GPA matters so much in order to apply to med school and all of that. I just didn't want grades to have such a high influence on if I enjoyed the class or not. So instead for this video I'm gonna be basing a lot of my rankings about this whole learning process. So I'll be judging things by how much I was able to learn, how enjoyable it is from learning it, and the amount of effort that it took me for the class. So yeah, with those two out of the way, let's get this ranking started. First class we have is Math 33A. This was my first class here at UCLA and I took it with Professor Philip Hazy. Now Math 33A is basically Introduction to Linear Algebra. I was enrolled in this class just because I finished multivariable calculus during my senior year of high school. So it was basically the next step forward for me to learn math. Now looking back on this class, oh boy, I have no clue why I took this class to begin with. It didn't satisfy any of my requirements, and I didn't really need to take it as a pre-med. But because I was really good at math in high school, I decided to challenge myself and I enrolled in this course. Even though a lot of people who enrolled in this class were engineers, computer scientists, and even mathematicians. After all, because this was my first ever college class, I didn't actually have a lot of tools to learn and prepare from it, and I believe I could have done way better in this class if I was just smart about putting in the effort that I had. And this class is the reason why I believe my GPA is pretty low compared to other pre-meds. So because of all of that, I think I'm going to put Math 33A in the regrettable category. Not because it was a bad class, I think Professor Filipazzi was a great professor. I'm just regretting it because I definitely should have done better. Next class we have on the list is Chem 14A. Took this my fall quarter of 2019 with Professor Lavelle. If you guys don't go to UCLA, just know Professor Lavelle is probably the most well-known UCLA professor in the chem department. Now because I took AP Chemistry when I was in high school, Chem 14A did cover so much of the content that it was pretty much almost all review for me. But at the same time, I was really new to this whole college thing. And I honestly underestimated on how much work I needed to get an A in college. And because I didn't know how important midterms and finals are in order to determine your grade, I actually messed the big time because I didn't really study for this final and it kicked my butt. I should have had an A in this class but I didn't get an A. At least there was a learning lesson out of it. So I'm gonna put this class in the solid category. Cluster ADA taught by Professor Hsu as well as two other professors. Now a quick overview about the cluster program here at UCLA. It's basically just a year-long GE course about a specific topic. So for my cluster, this class was all about human aging. I definitely learned new things in it, and it definitely was very interesting to me. But for cluster 80A specifically during the fall quarter, it wasn't as memorable as the other two quarters in my opinion. Which is why this class should go in the forgettable category. So that was my fall quarter classes, nothing too special. Also didn't do the best on it in my opinion. But now we move on to my winter quarter classes. Or the last quarter that I had classes before coronavirus kicked in and everything else was made online. So first class we'll talk about is the continuation of Chem 14A and that is Chem 14B. More introduction to chemistry also taught by Professor Lavell. Chem 14B personally I I believe is slightly better. I was able to do pretty well on the quizzes and final. Unfortunately, I made a huge error and I forgot to study a whole chapter 
for the midterm, so we lost a lot of points on it. But in my opinion, it was definitely better than Chem 14A, and I feel like I've had a lot more fun in learning the material in this process as well. So we're gonna bump Chem 14B up to the grades category. Also because I think I was a lot more proactive in learning for this class because I wanted some redemption after not doing well in Chem 14A. Next class on the list is a UCLA mandated class, and that is English Composition 3. This is, I believe, the smallest class setting that I've taken at UCLA. There were only around 15 to 17 people in my class. And yeah, this was basically just a pretty straightforward English class. You write three essays and the average of those, plus your participation in the class, gets you a final grade. I had Professor Gerard for this class, and out of all the classes that I've taken, for sure, she is the most traditional teacher that I've had. Just because in class, we oftentimes get worksheets that are printed out, and when we turn in assignments, we have to print those out. In my opinion, there was nothing that special about this class. It was also a little bit frustrating from time to time, just because you had to write these essays in a group. It's less writing overall, but I don't think I've learned much in this class, in my honest opinion. So I'm gonna put this class in the forgettable category, along with Cluster ADA. I do, however, still think Cluster ADA is still more forgettable than English Composition 3. Next class we have on the list is Musicology 80. This is another UCLA GE that I had to take in order to fulfill my music and visual arts credit. And this class was about the Beatles. Now I took this class because a friend of mine actually recommended this class to me. He said this class would be the easiest way for me to fulfill my music duties. So I took this class and honestly, it was pretty great. It's a really fun class in my opinion. You do get to learn a lot. There isn't much pressure from everything. But yeah, this class is only offered during winter quarters and it does fill up pretty fast. So definitely try to use your first pass on it. Great class and even better than Chem 14B in my opinion. Cluster 80B, the continuation of Cluster 80A, in which we learn more about human aging. But this time, for Cluster 80B, some things are different, in which we have one less lecture, so we only have one lecture every week, and in order to make up the additional time, we had to do a service learning project. But for my service learning project, I was able to go and volunteer at a nursing home, and like just spending time to talk with the elderly. Personally, I found my service learning project very fun and enjoyable. However, if you're interested in signing up for this class, I can almost guarantee that you will not be doing what I did for my winter quarter. All because of coronavirus shutting everything down and there is no way, in my opinion, nursing homes will decide to let college students in to volunteer. That's just the way of things, but then again, knowing that, I feel like that definitely made this class a lot more memorable than it is. So I'm gonna put this class at the very top of the grade category. And now that marks the end of my winter quarter at UCLA. Ooh. And yeah, for the remainder of the classes, they were all taken online, which is why the tiles seem a bit different, just because there's a little coronavirus in the background. But yeah, starting my spring quarter, I continued along with Chem 14C. We've left Introduction to Chemistry, and now we're gonna be talking about an Introduction to Organic Chemistry. I took this class with a fairly new professor called Professor Castillo Rodriguez. I was a little bit hesitant from the Bruin Rock reviews that I read during the first quarter, just because a lot of people didn't really like her lecturing style. But I think with online courses and gaining access to the replay button did help this class a lot because she does go kind of fast on a lot of difficult topics. But because lectures were recorded, I got to slow things down, rewatch the things that I didn't really understand, and it was all good from there. But yeah, don't think this was an absolute great course, but definitely I think this was a solid course. So I'm gonna put this behind 14A in the solid category. Next course I took at UCLA is Life Science 7A, also known as an Introductory to Life Sciences, or Biology. But yeah, the LS series at UCLA is considered pretty difficult. This class uses lecture time not so much to talk about new concepts, but rather they just give you guys some practice questions, and you basically just have to use what you know to make a best guess on them. In order to learn material for this class, you do have to do it all by reading through an online textbook called Launchpad, but I do think on the bright side of this is that Life Science 7A does have really interesting content. And additionally, what really made this class great too was because of Professor Malloy. The midterms for this class were group midterms. Basically, you do the midterm by yourself first, but what gets graded is your participation in discussing these questions in a randomly assigned group with other people. And overall, even though I took AP Biology in high school, I believe I still learned a lot more things because of this class. I really like this class just because it did give me the opportunity to teach my fellow peers. Biology is a pretty difficult subject 
for a lot of people entering college. And because I had a little bit more experience, I feel like I'm able to give back a lot more. And additionally, this class did give me a lot more opportunities to go out and practice to challenge myself. So I went to a lot of the CLC workshop sessions and I was able to work through worksheets that were a little bit more challenging than the class content that I got. And for those reasons, I'm going to be putting LS7A actually in the legendary category. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree, but this is my tier list after all. Next class we have on the list is Chem 14BL. But this class is technically a continuation of Chem 14B. It's more like you have to take what you've learned in Chem 14A and Chem 14B and be able to apply it in a laboratory setting. This was however a pretty strange class to take online in my opinion, since instead of doing the labs, you're basically just given data from your TA after they show you a video of them doing the lab. Now luckily for me, I was able to have a lot of these laboratory skills already because I took AP Chemistry and because I actually worked in a lab during the summer of my senior year. So this wasn't really a huge issue for me, but there wasn't really anything that memorable from this class, I think. Which is why I'm going to be putting Chem 14 BL in the forgettable category. So next class on the list we have here is the final class that I had for my cluster series, and that's Cluster ADCW. For the last class of this cluster series, instead of having lectures, we basically had a three hour seminar every week and we focused on one specific topic that we got to choose from. So for my seminar, I chose the topic of aging and the pursuit of happiness. And basically what we had to do for this class is that we have to collect a bunch of data from people from all age groups. So then in the end, we can correlate certain factors that we're interested in with overall happiness that they experience. This process was just created for us so we can learn the general basis for creating an observation study and at the end of everything we had to create a presentation for the class and we had to write out a whole research poster to guide people along with it. Overall I actually feel like I've learned so much from this class just because this is my first time ever doing something of this caliber. So for those reasons I'm gonna be putting cluster ADCW in the legendary category. I'm gonna put it behind LS7A just because this wasn't necessarily relating to academic content and instead this was just a little fun project on the side. And that leads us to our final quarter of freshman year and that is the summer classes that I've taken online. I took these four classes during the summer just because UCLA is technically a public school so it is pretty difficult to enroll in certain classes. So for all of these four classes right here that you see, they were pretty hard to enroll in normally. And taking them all during my summer quarter was just a little strategic play, just so in the future I can be using my first pass enrollments on different classes. But yeah, these classes during the normal school year just fills up way too fast, so I'm taking them over the summer. And to start, we have another GE class, and this time it is more related to my pre-med path. So MCD Bio 60 is a class about biomedical ethics, and basically with this class, we got to learn about different controversial viewpoints relating to the field of medicine. So we analyze a bunch of different topics such as abortion, physician assisted suicide, using stem cells, from like different types of philosophical viewpoints as well. I took this class just because my roommate Drew took this class during his fall quarter at UCLA. So yeah, for a unique spin on this video, let's FaceTime him right now and get his perspective on this class. Alright, what's up Drew? What's up Jason? Long time no see. Hey, what's your thoughts about MCDB60? You know, the class that I took over the summer and the one that you took? MCDB60, Biomedical Ethics with Katie Gallagher. Yes. The class ever in your life. I took it fall quarter. Lots of reading. The, the most boring college professor I've ever had. Second most teacher I've ever had in my life. The discussions were mandatory. And the reading was out of this world, like way too much. And then the lectures would be about the reading. So there is no point in doing the reading. So I'd give the class like a four out of 10, especially because I didn't agree with the reading. So yeah, don't take this class. Thanks, Rude. Right. I need to. See ya. <laughs> Let's pop it. That was my roommate's idea on it. And guess who didn't follow his advice and still took that class? But yeah, my roommate Drew pretty much summed that class up pretty well. It was slightly better in terms of grading for online class. But in the end, I'm still gonna have to put this class in the regrettable category. That honestly, I should have taken the final a bit more seriously. I was really pumped that I was able to do so well on the midterm that it kind of just based my final on how I did when writing my midterm. That was just an unfortunate turn of events. Next class up is Stats 13, 
It is a prerequisite for my major. And I took this class in the summer with Professor Xiang. But yeah, first of all, Professor Xiang, if you're watching this, hello, thank you for tuning in. And yeah, this class was actually really good in my opinion. Personally, for me in high school, I was always a math guy. I never really taken stats. So this was my first ever statistics course. Statistics to me is somewhat interesting just because I do watch a lot of sports and stuff and there's a lot of sports stats going on in the internet. And yeah, honestly, because I was so unfamiliar with the subject, I feel like I learned a lot through the first six weeks of the course. A lot of these concepts you probably have already learned just because of intuition, but you do in fact go a lot more in depth compared to common knowledge. And I believe by taking this class, it definitely gave me a sense of greater appreciation for my cluster class that I took a quarter prior. Because looking back on it, with Without the stats mindset that I have right now, there is no way that the cluster class that I took would have had as much meaning. So with all of that, I feel like stats 13 has to be in the legendary category. I'm gonna put it above cluster 80CW just because stats 13 gave my cluster class a lot more meaning to it. And I'm gonna put it slightly below 7A just because it was a summer class. So the content didn't go as deep as what 7A originally did in the spring. Next class on the list we have is Physics 5A. But yeah, Physics 5A at UCLA is pretty much equivalent to AP Physics C Mechanics. Basically, almost every single component of this class was in fact review for me. However, I still tried a lot for this class just because I wasn't the sharpest student in physics back in high school. So I kind of just wanted to hone my skills for my physics. This class actually gave me my first ever A plus in a science course here at UCLA. Unfortunately, just because this class included a lot of material that I already knew, I didn't feel as inspired when learning the material. I saw this class more as a time to practice just so I can then do the problems faster. So unfortunately, because of how I'm grading everything, I'm gonna have to put this in the forgettable category. I'm gonna put it actually above cluster 80A, but below Chem 14BL. And now here we have it, the final UCLA course that I take in my freshman year, Chem 14CL. Basically, this is the lab component to Chem 14C. So this has to deal a lot with organic chemistry. Personally for me, I don't think I have the strongest foundation in organic chemistry after one quarter. Like I understand the material, but there's no way for me to be able to teach other people. But Chem 14CL, I think it's pretty interesting just because nothing that I learned in AP chemistry really covered the stuff we're doing right now. So I'm gonna put this a whole tier above and I'll say this is at the top of the solid courses. So yeah, that about does it for my freshman year tier list rankings. Definitely compared to a lot of other freshmen, I've taken a lot more courses. I have 15 on here already. And it's also pretty crazy to think that we're just basically only a fourth of the way done with all the classes that I'm gonna be taking here at college. But yeah, that about does it for this tier list ranking right here. We'll be continuing things again next year during the summer when I tack on all of my sophomore year classes onto this. We might also also move a couple of these classes along in retrospect after we finish another year at UCLA. So I hope you guys enjoyed another one of these videos. Once again, Waddle at Night, amazing setup in my opinion. Like, actually, fancy lighting right here that is kind of messing up with my camera. But yeah, anyways guys, I hope you guys have found this video either entertaining or informative if you are going to UCLA and you're an upcoming freshman who's also a pre-med and just interested in taking a look at the classes I took. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe, join the WAD squad if you haven't already. I'm really excited to be able to bring you guys along for my second year here at UCLA. We'll be able to get through a lot of these things together. And yeah, I want to wish you guys all a wild, fantastic day and we'll see you in another video. Peace.